All right, so now just a brief talk about the statistics menu. Um, so that is located here. So here is your, you add to your summation registers. Let's go ahead and enter some data first. So let's say we have some Y and X values. Now, just like it is displayed in the stack, this is going to be your Y value, that's going to be your X. So whatever this data represents, let's say it's 9.7 and 1. Now I'm going to enter it into my register. And that shows me I have one piece of information in my register. And if I were to go to my stat menu and look at the sum, my X value is 1, just like there. And my Y value is 9.7. Um, my mean is going to be 1. I only have one value, and it's going to be 9.7. My weighted mean is going to be 1. I only have the, uh, the one value. So anyway, so I've got 1 in there. So enter in 18 and 2. Add that. I've got 2 in my um, register. 14 and 3. Add that. 15. And let's say I enter in something wrong here. I enter 6. And I add it in. Well, I have four values in there, but I got 15 and 6. So what I can do is use the last x to pull in that 6 and 15 that I entered. My y value stays the same. So let's delete that and put in the correct value of 3 and add that. So now we have five values, uh, 15 and 1, and 11 and 2. I'm sorry. Um, so now I need to, yeah. So I still didn't remove that 15 and 6. So 15 and 6. What I need to do is use the, the subtract. So I did shift and subtract that. Now I, I only have six values in there. Okay, now go to stat. So I can look at the sum of what's in my X register. And what's in my Y register is the sum of all the Ys. So this is the sum of the Xs. So I've got 3, 9, 12, that's correct. And that should be the sum of the Ys. Uh, you can't see it when you're on the stat menu, but you can use the X, Y swap to swap back and forth between those. Or you can exit out and see X and Y values. So that's the sum. The mean of the X's is 2. And of the Y's is 13.78. Um, okay, the weighted mean doesn't mean much here. Uh, standard deviation... And I think that's it here. Okay, so we entered in that one. Now, an easier way to enter in this, let's do this for the next data. So we got this many pounds. Let's say this represents bags of nuts or something. So this bag, we have eight bags of six pounds and 12 bags of seven pounds. So I want to enter that in. But I can enter this in matrix form. So I've got... I'm going to enter it in as, um, there's six elements, so a six by two matrix. And I'm gonna make a, let's dimension a new matrix, I'll just use matrix one here. So if I edit matrix one, okay, my first value is going to be, I'm going to transpose this and, and draw it down. So my x value is going to be 6. I'll go down to the next x value is 7, uh, 8, down, 9, 10, and 11. And it wraps around back to the top. So, so 1, 1 is 6, and I had some values in that before, so anyway. Um, that's going to be 8, 
and that's going to be 12, and 24, and 23, and 15, and 9. So now I've actually got all the, the data stored in matrix form. So I can go back and, and change any of it if I want. So I've just got my, my X column and my, uh, my first column is my X column, my second column is my Y column. So now I'm going to recall matrix one. It's a six by two matrix. And then I use the, well, first. Okay, this is what, I should have said this at the beginning. Clear, uh, yep, yeah. clear your summation because right now our summation registers have stuff in it. So I cleared that. If I go to my statistics, there's nothing in my sum, mean, no error. Okay, that's all cleared. So recall matrix one. Got the six by two, hit the summation button. It runs through the X column, runs through the Y column. It tells me I've got six elements. So now the same thing. I can go here and I can look at the, the sum. So that should be the sum of the X's, all of these. Uh, swap that, some of the y's. I got the mean, and now I have a weighted mean. So the weighted mean gives me uh, these, so it's the mean of the weights, or mean, <laughs> yes. I guess a little confusing for this since I'm using weight as the, uh, the mean. But anyways, it's weighted by the quantity. All right. So I did that, I've got standard deviation, everything there. All right, I wanna enter in one last one. So I'm gonna to go to that matrix. I'm going to edit my matrix one because I've got this as well. And I could enter it across if I wanted to. So I've got two and 1.5 E3, 1.5 K. Uh, 1 and 1,000, 3, 1,000, 5, and 2,000, 5, and 3,000, and 4, and 2,000. So I've got all my data entered. My X's, I just went across each element I entered and just kept on going through the matrices. Okay, clear out my statistics. Uh, recall matrix one, my six by two matrix. Do my statistics uh, register operation on it. And now, so this is, this is a uh, plot of how many minutes, this is from the manual, how many minutes of radio advertising time was done and how much revenue came in based on that. So two minutes, about 1.5k, one minute, 1k, three minutes, 1k. So we get something, we get a plot like this. So if this is minutes, and this is revenue, then two minutes, we got 1.5k, one minute we got 1k, three minutes we got 1k, uh, four minutes going out to here we got 2k, and five minutes at 2k, and five minutes it's at uh, uh, 3k. So we want to curve fit this and predict what we're going to get say at Oh, I don't know, two and a half minutes of advertising. So if I go to the stat, again, I can look at my, my uh, means. Uh, but if I go to the curve fit here, I've got several different um, models I can choose from. So I've got a linear fit, a log fit, an exponential fit, so linear is just a line. Log looks something like this. Exponential goes like that. Um, and, no, sorry, that's, that's the power. The exponential 
It'd be similar, but it'd be more like that. Yes. And power. Sorry, I'm running out of space. Power would be like that. All right, or you can choose best, and best tries to find the, the uh, which one of these has the best correlation to the data that's given. So it shows uh, the exponential, and I'm going to go ahead and pick linear. Okay, back out of that menu, and now it'll tell me what the y-intercept is. So it figured out what that line was going to be, and it figured out that the line intercept was going to be at $500. Uh, the slope is going to be 375, so it curve fitted this data like that. And the correlation is 0.81, not real great. But now, if we enter in, say, 2.5 minutes, and we want to find out what Y would be, so we can say, okay, for 2.5 minutes, we'd get about $1,500, according to this model. Uh, curve fit. We can also say, well, we want to get two and a half thousand dollars. So 2.5 E3. And then how many minutes of advertising would we have to do in order to get that? So find X uh, based on that Y value, about five and a third minutes of advertising. So anyways, real nice curve fit. Uh, one thing I should note though, um, if I back out here, okay, so these are the summation registers. You can use all or linear. If you use the linear, you save on memory space because it uses uh, fewer registers. I think it's only like five or six versus 11, but you only get the linear fit. If you use all, then you have the power fit, the exponential, the logarithmic. So that's just, just one thing to keep in mind. Um, I think there's plenty of memory. Most people probably won't have a problem, so leaving it on all is fine. All right. I think we've gone through everything in the curve fit and statistics. Um, yeah.